My name is Mary O'Connor. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and I'm chair of the orthopedic surgery department at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. And it's my pleasure today to speak with you and hopefully your family about hip replacement surgery and to provide you with some information which I really hope will be helpful uh, to you in terms of you making a decision about whether this is the right operation for you. When we do hip replacement surgery, in general I do a less invasive approach with a smaller incision, uh, which usually tends to really not be very big, a little bigger on heavy patients. Uh, and we detach very few muscles from the back of the hip joint to get into the hip and basically cut out the arthritic ball that's the top of the femur, which is part of the hip joint. And then what we do is we ream the socket and we put in a metal cup with a plastic liner and you'll notice there's some holes here we can put a, some screws up through the this socket into the patient's bone to help secure that and then the patient's bone will grow into this surface on the socket on the stems the femoral side we put a stem in that usually has this shape which is actually very bone sparing so there's not much bone that we remove with a ball and then that is what the replacement looks like when it's all put together. The surgery takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Patients are in the hospital usually for three or four days and they go home with the walker or crutches. They can put as much weight on the leg as they're comfortable putting on and then we get them to a cane as soon as they feel comfortable advancing to a cane. We strive for all our patients to have an excellent experience here and I believe in my heart that most doctors and most hospitals and healthcare facilities strive to do that as well. I think that uh, we do it a little better uh, because of our team approach and because of all the involvement that we have with various special specialists uh, and that our commitment really is to putting the needs of the patient first. So when you come in for your hip replacement you would go to the preoperative holding area where you would be seen by a team of anesthesiologists uh, and the anesthesiologist would typically put a little catheter into your buttock region to numb the nerves that go to the hip and the leg that we're operating on. It's called a psoas catheter and we use that catheter in conjunction with the spinal so you get numbed up from the waist down in surgery as well but we'll use that catheter for the first few days after surgery to help control your pain and to minimize your need for narcotic medicine either through the IV or by mouth because the narcotic medicine tends to make you more groggy and maybe sick to your stomach and so we are very focused on controlling pain because patients understandably are anxious about pain control and they're worried about how much pain they're going to be in after an operation as, as, which is a normal concern. Some patients, especially older women, are concerned about whether their bones are strong enough for the hip replacement because they've been diagnosed with osteopenia, which is the bone is a little weaker, osteoporosis, which is the bone is weaker, uh, and they're still candidates for hip replacement surgery. So while we have to be a little more cautious with those patients because we recognize uh, that their bone quality, their bone strength isn't as good as it should be or that we would like it to be, they're still candidates for the surgery and once we do the hip replacement and we can get rid of their pain and they can get more active, it can s help their bones get stronger because we know that weight bearing exercises are really important for building up strength in the bone. So I actually encourage older women that have terrible hips with arthritis that also have osteoporosis to not let that kind of scare them off about the surgery.